Howdy y'all, Caleb here. Today, I'm looking at some lists from this past weekend. So I wanted to see what you guys are running. Uh, so, you know, I can prepare for my own tournaments. I can just copy paste one of y'all's lists. <laughs> um, so I was looking on BCP to see whatever I was running this past weekend. And I figured I'd do a video. Let me know if uh, this is something valuable. Maybe we'll, we'll, we'll keep doing this, doing some list reviews of, of the GTs from the past weekend. So, uh, let's, uh, we'll see. Uh, so, as I'm looking through, I, it looks like I, I found five different lists, I think, from GTs this past weekend. And looks like Seraphin was going about three and two pretty regularly. So, uh, <laughs> better than my last tournament. I went two and three in my last one. Uh, that was previous GHB. But, uh, so, let's let's break these down, see, see what if there's anything we can learn from... Your guys' list, let me know if, if I call out your list. Let me know how your tournament went and any uh, pointers you got for everybody. All right, so the first one was for from the Armed Forces GT, Armed Forces Day GT. And the first list here is Kevin Engel. He did take a Seraphim Thunder Lizard list and went 3-2 and two with that one. Looks like he came in 16th. And... Um, Let's look at, let's break that down a little bit. So we got Seraphin and Coalesce, Thunder Lizard, obviously. Defend what's ours is the grand strategy that he took. That's the one where, what is that? You're keeping everybody out of your territory. So by the end of the game, if no enemies are wholly within your territory, you get that one. So, you know, as long as you're planning on killing a lot of stuff, then that one is going to be fairly achievable. Uh, it just kind of depends on, on uh, what your opponent is. But... This is one where let's kill the other army, let's table them, and we'll definitely get our grand strategy. <laughs> Triumphs inspired, won't have a chance of that because he's at 2,000 points exactly. Our leaders, we do have a Skink Star Priest with Hand of Glory, always a great choice. A Slon Star Master with a Tixie Grubs to give him rerolls on spells, dispels, unbinds, and a heal. That's really good. And Stellar Tempest. Obviously, that, that's pretty standard loadout for a Slon, I, I feel like at this point, especially with. As many spells are going around right now, that reroll is vital. Our general is a Stegodon with Skink Chief. He's got Prime War Beast, Cloak of Feathers, and Beastmaster. So we got the extra attacks. I love Cloak of Feathers on the Stegodon Chief. Is really good. So we got two artifacts so far. We do have a Warlord and a Command Entourage. So we're going to have a total of three artifacts. Our other battalion is Bounty Hunters. Okay, that's good. We'll look at that in here in a minute. We do have a Skink priest with guidance i've been taking the skink priest with guidance a lot lately just for the extra command point chance i just i'm so hungry for command points nowadays that i almost value that over the heels which I, I took some time or curse i usually put curse on something else oh which he's got on his engine of the gods engine of the gods with the fusil conflagration and curse this is our mortal wound output machine here <laughs> always a great pick and the source, Astralith Banner Bearer there. So he's, oh yep, yeah, he's got some endless spells. I'm, if, if you're planning on running endless spells, the Astralith Banner Bearer, why do I call him the Astralith Banner Bearer? He's just Astralith Bearer. <laughs> Is a great pick because it does extend those endless spells. Kind of, kind of a weird thing nowadays. But that makes it to where these hor the Horgast is going all the way across the board turn one. It's going to go something like 26 total now, 26 inches now. And the purple sun is going to go, what, deploy eight, move eight, plus six from uh, the astral bear. So it can, it can move far too. Uh, I shouldn't be doing math right now while I'm doing video. What is that, 20 inches? Uh, so not getting them into turn one, but turn one, you're probably going to cast that horror gas spell. What that does is that, that shuts off inspiring presence, and if they fail it, they have to another D three units uh, models flee, and so that's good because that gives you something to do on turn one. You're gonna be shooting with the Stegodon uh, Chief. You're gonna be doing Comet's Call with in, uh, with the Slon, maybe Stellar Tempest. If you've got a good target, you're throwing that Horgast into it when you do the Stellar Tempest, so that they can't inspiring presence, and they're gonna lose more from that horde. You're also going to hit them with, oh yeah, we got a Bastildon, that's good. So you're going to be hitting them with some stuff to make that horror gas hit hard. If if you don't have, if you don't go turn one, top of turn one, you're probably able to get this purple sun into them as well. 
to make even, to make all your shots even more damaging. We've got two units of knights. Are those in bounty hunter? Those are in bounty hunter. That's good. Uh, knights and bounty hunter do great. We've got a video coming up next on source knights and bounty hunters, and this is exactly how I would run them. MSU knights in bounty hunters supported by a star priest. They're gonna do some good damage that way. They're gonna they're gonna do work for you as long as you go into Galician veterans. And we've also got ten skinks. She's filling out her battle line. A Basildon, who will be supported by the skink priest, to give them extra fun stuff to do. And then our two in the spells, realm shaper and oh, I didn't even notice the croxagor down here. Nice. We got some croxagor. Are they in bounty hunters too? Yes. Uh, that's the video after nights. So that one's coming up too. Our Croxagor and bounty hunters. If you swing those moon hammers into a horde, whoo, they, uh, it's fun. It'll do some damage. So I like this. It's got some flexibility. It's got some shooting. It's got good casting. It's got, um, some good units there. It doesn't have a ton of bodies on the board. You know, if you lose, if you lose your knights, you're basically out of bodies. You don't have really any good screens. So he may have suffered a little bit just from the, the sheer lack of bodies. That might be why he took defend what's ours. It's like, if, 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 if I'm going to win a game, I've got to kill the opponent completely. <laughs> uh, so fun list. I like it. I like it. Well done on, on three and two. All right. Aaron green was the next one. He went uh, three and two also. No, he went two and three. Let's take a look at his list. All right. Oh, Aaron Green's list is a Kotal's Claw. Nice. So we've got Kotal's Claw, Coalesce, Seraphim. Continuous Expansion is a grand strategy. Man, I just don't like that one. Continuous Expansion is hard because it requires... What is it? It requires you to have four units still alive at the end of the game and each one you have to have a unit wholly within each quarter of the board so you've not only do you have to have four units alive you have to have them spread out pretty far does he have any summoning he doesn't have an engine so he's not gonna be summoning anything i just i feel like continuous expansion is just a harder version of some of the other ones like a uh, show of dominance which you would just have to have one galician veteran in the middle of the of the table I don't know. That's a, it's a tough one. I'm wondering, Aaron, let us know if you, if you completed that, how often you complete that grand strategy. Um, so leaders, we have Lord Croak. Nice. Oh, we do have an engine of guys. Okay. So we do have some summoning. So maybe he can get in some extra units here for continuous expansion. Um, that would help if you can get some summons by the end of the game. All right, so we have Lord Croak. We have Angel of Gods with Curse. That's a good one. Um, we have a Scar Veteran on Carnosaur. Nice, cheap monster that can that can give some buffs in Kotal's Claw. With Dominant Predator, which is just recycle some command points. War Spear, that's good. Eviscerating Blade to pop off some mortal wounds on the Rider's weapon. And Beastmaster to give him extra attacks or run and charge if you need it. So a well-kitted out source uh Carnosaur. Man, yeah. I like the Carnosaur. It's cheap. It's it's cheap enough right now. What else do we have in this list? Do we have any way to get extra rend? No. That's just what the Carnosaur suffers from. It needs more rend. I might have I might have put some of that stuff on the engine, gotten out of the uh uh dominant predator, because that needs a source, I think. So we could have gotten a different command trait. Anyway. That's fine. You're going Kotal's Claw. You know, go with it. Go source heavy when you're going Kotal's Claw. Uh, we got a Skink Star Priest with Bind Endless Spell. Interesting. So maybe he's wanting to capture a Purple Sun that is probably going to get cast. But with Lord Croak, you're probably going to try to uh, you're un, you're gonna try to stop those things. But I guess if it does get out, you can bind it. Make it your own. Uh, Star Priest is... I like the Hand of Glory on that one, but finally the spell has its purpose. Astralith Bear for the extra range for all your Crook spells. That's good. Do we have some Guard? Yeah, we got a reinforced unit of Guard, so I'm guessing he's marching Croak, the Astralith, and his Guard towards the middle of the board. 
um, and throwing out mortal wounds from there. We do have two units of knights. So that's good. Um, buff those suckers up with the star priest mortal wounds, and you can you can output some damage, especially if they're in bounty hunters. One unit of knights is bounty hunter. Why is the other one? Oh, the other one's in warlord. Okay. You might, you know, you might just switch that over to the Warlord, just make it the Command Entourage, and then you can get out of the battle line requirement and put the other knights into Bounty Hunters. What do we have in Bounty Hunters? Oh, we already got Bounty Hunters full. So we got Croxagore with Moon Hammers. I like that. Croxagore in Bounty Hunters does awesome. And Salamander Hunting Pack in Bounty Hunters. I think you could almost not put them in Bounty Hunters like you, you can get a little extra damage in melee from them, but it doesn't work with shooting. I, I think I would rather have the knights in bounty hunters, and just the salamanders off hunting on their own. You also have a life swarm for sixty points, and that comes to nineteen eighty. Um, so he went two and three. You know, the life swarm seems a little out of place. It's just it's not quite as good as it used to be, and for sixty points. And it doesn't double tap anymore. It only only does D3. Ah, oh, man. But it really does help keep your salamanders alive. Keep, keep, uh, it's not going to keep croak alive, but carnosaurs, whatnot. I don't know. You know, it's, it's easy to say, just throw a purple sun in there. You got it. You've got an extra, you've got 80 points if you take out the life swarm. Um, I think maybe the salamander and life swarm, we got some, we got 220 points to mess with there that, uh, might have some fun, but if you take if you take the salamander out, you won't have any shooting. Uh, anyway, Codal's Claw. It's good to see some Codal's Claw on the table, even if it's not like a, any big hordes or anything of source, which is kind of what I'm I'm excited to play in the Codal's Claw. All right, good job, Aaron. Most know how you did. All right, next up is Jordan. And he was playing at Peace Through Daka, AOS GT. And he also went three and two. Dropped the first two games. Got a hold of himself, said, I got this. And got three wins in a row. <laughs> uh, so we are playing Seraphim Thunder Lizard, Coalesce. Uh, great choice there. <laughs> and Grand Strategy, Hold the Line. Wait, isn't that from the, la is that from the last edition? Hold the Line? Is this no? He's got bounty hunters. Okay, maybe I don't know. I don't know what the grand strategy is there for hold the line, but uh, let me know what that is. Maybe it was some kind of special thing for their JT or something. Um, th oh, this list right here. I like this list. This is this is one of my favorite lists that we're looking at. Uh, definitely a list I might run. Uh, I'm in love with monsters here, and he's only got I think eight models in this list. So we start off with a Skink Oracle on Troglodon, and He's giving him the Fusil of Conflagration and Hand of Glory. <laughs> I think this is the first time I've seen a Troglodon in a list in months. But I know what he's doing here. He wants to take as many monsters as possible. And so why take a Salon when you can take a Troglodon that has Comet's Call? That's what you're taking the Salon for anyway. It's Comet's Call. I mean, and the other stuff. Command points, uh, re-rolls, board wide unbinds, yada, yada, yada. But this one's on a monster, so I, I like I like that right there. Hand of Glory is also good too if you want your rerolls and whatnot. Uh, then our general stick it on with Skink Chief, Prime War Beast, Cloak of Feathers, Beastmaster, all great picks there. Can do a ton of damage that way. And one Skink Priest with Curse. Ooh, I wonder how often he got that Curse off. I I would almost be wanting to take. Um, guidance just to give me an extra command point for the turn or two he's alive. I can't imagine that priest stayed alive very long to get into curse range, but maybe so. That's our one one non-monster in this list. We've also got three Stegodons, and yes, they are all in Bounty Hunters. Uh, the best place to play a Stegodon right now is in Bounty Hunters. Just gives you the extra damage. They're still not great in melee. But it does make them a little bit better if you're going into Galician Veterans for the extra plus one damage. And then we've got two Basilodons back here backing up the back lines. 
we do have a realm shaper engine and probably uh, the only thing you put in it is this priest so yeah see i think that's why i wouldn't take curse because my priest is going to be in the realm shaper engine probably flanked on either side by the bastillons but i guess if they charge you or your or your place in your realm shaper aggressively you can get off curse that way uh <laughs> A fun list. We've got a command entourage for the extra command point, and then bounty hunters for all the stegodons. Uh So that's fun. All monsters except for the skink priest. N don't worry about any summons. Don't worry about any of that kind of nonsense. Just bring eight models to the tournament and have fun. Uh, definitely a fun looking list. <laughs> uh, good job on the three and two, Jordan. I like that one. Next up, we've got the Boise Cup, and these are our last two lists we'll look at. One from Tim and one from Nicholas. Both went three and two at the Boise Cup. Tim was running Thunder Lizard. Nicholas running Dracothian's Tail. All right. We got, got uh, three of, uh, let's see, we had three factions, three different sub-factions in this, this past weekend. So cool. All right. This is Tim's list. He's Seraphim, Coalesce, Thunder Lizard. Defend what's ours. That's the same one where keep enemies hold outside of holy within your territory. So. Um, a good one. Yeah, you know, if you're if you're tabling the opponent, then you're getting this easy for sure. So, one of those ones where it's feast or famine. I think. Um, a lot of times, some uh, and I think we talked about this back in the grand strategy. This is one that you know, if you know the game types that you're playing into, and you're playing the ones where your deployments are small, this is a good one to play into because a lot of times they're not going to have the ability to stretch the table out that much and get into your deployment zone if they're trying to capture objectives. So it's not a bad one. Defend what's ours. Uh, inspired, he won't get the triumph anyway. He's at 2,000 points. Um, Engine of the Gods, we're he's he's our general and command trait Prime War Beast, of course. Arcane Tome, so he's making him a wizard. Do we have a croak? We do have a croak. So that's why. So now this skink priest is going to be able to be the vassal for Lord Croak's casting. So you're going to push this Engine of the God up the table and cast all your spells from Croak through the Engine of the Gods. That's pretty cool. Uh, a nice little trick there. Uh, Mount Trait Beastmaster spell Hand of Glory from the since it's a wizard now from the Arcane Tome. And then Prayer's Curse. This, is, this Engine of the Gods is going to be doing a lot. <laughs> Uh, you've got all the normal Engine of the God's ability. You've also got command traits, mount traits. Uh, it's a wizard and a, and a priest. So, <laughs> lots of fun stuff to do. Astrolith Bear is going to be supporting Croak, making his spells cast further. What endless spells do we have? Purple Sun and Cogs. Okay, we know it. We know what the uh, loadout here is. So, uh, Artifact, Fusil Configuration for the Bear. you got to put that on somebody. So, uh, And then Lord Croak. And I guess we can go ahead and talk probably about these endless spells while we're talking about Croak. So we got a Purple Sun and a Cogs. So do you you have, yeah, you have two other wizards other than Croak. So probably you're going to be casting Cogs with one of your other um, wizards. And then Purple Sun trying to push it as far up the board as you can through the engine using the Astralith Bear extra range. So I'd imagine that's what was going on. Um, but plus Croak's, you know, Comet's Call and uh, Celestial Deliverance and stuff is always fun to do a bunch of mortal wounds. Skink Priest has Heal as his prayer. You should have enough command points between Croak and the Star Seer. At that point, since Croak gets an extra roll, you can you can go with Heal on Priest to keep your Bastille on or Engine of the Gods topped up. Skink Star Seers taking Bind Endless Spell. That's a, a good one in case they're throwing some, some spells at you if you want to capture them. Or in this Purple Sun meta, you know, if you're casting your Purple Sun and they cast one and you bind it. <laughs> so now you've got two Purple Suns for yourself. It's always nice. Uh, battle Line, we've got two MSU units of Skinks and a Stegodon. Is a Stegodon and Bounty Hunters yet? We got... A battle regiment, bounty hunters, and command entourage. So, stegodons and bounty hunters, which gives them extra damage. What else is in bounty hunters? And we got some croxagor in bounty hunters. That's good. We also got a bastildon to take advantage of thunder lizard, and we have the skink priest to buff him up. And our croxagor, yeah, croxagor are fun here in this list because of the bounty hunters. You can have a lot of fun with those croxagor. 
Um, I like it. I, I kind of like what he's doing. He's got a plan with Croak in the list. You got a plan to make sure you have a, a vassal to cast through. Uh, I guess you've actually got two vassals to cast through. And you've got some good spells to cast with it. So I like that. Um, maybe some, you know, I don't know what to improve here. Maybe I'm, I'm wondering if the Stegodon pulled its weight. It does give some a little extra shooting. But you might have wanted the guard if you need to play aggressive with Croak at some point in your in your matchups. You know, you can easily slot in two units of guard and they go fine in bounty hunters also because they can they can pop out some damage that way. Um and you'd have a few extra points left over to to play around with. But yeah, looks like it had a had a play in there with uh Croak and the Arcane Tome engine. I like that one. I like that one. All right, and our last list to look at is Nicholas's Dracothian's Tale. He went three and two also. And, oh man, this this list here. What's he got going on here? We got two slons here in this list. Um, I'm going to have to refresh my brain on Dracothian's Tale. It's been a while since I've played him. Uh, so Dracothian's Tale, Seraphon, obviously Starborn, Take What's Theirs. That's the one where you've got to be have more in their territory, right? Complete this grand strategy if there are more friendly units and enemy units wholly within your opponent's territory. Yeah. So he's he's definitely playing the board control game, which you can do in Dracothian's Tale because you've got things, you've got units coming down on the board, you've got teleports, you've got summons. So yeah, that's a, that's a good one. So our, let's, let's, let's take a look. At, let me look at the battalions first. We got... So he's not going low drop, which a lot of times in Dracothian Tell you'd see low drop because we got uh, two magnificent, magnific magnificent, so extra command, uh, extra artifacts, and a bounty hunter. So he's pretty high drop. Uh, extra artifacts. So we'll have three artifacts here. Maybe that's why we got two slons um, for the extra a summoning points, but also to make sure that you don't get. Your slon sniped turn one, and now half your army's off the board. <laughs> uh, if you haven't played Dracothian Tell, you can keep, you know, half your army off the board, and they they can pop up within range of the slon or Astroleth Banner Bearer. So, um, no, that may just be summons. It may have to be within range of the slon. Yeah, man, that's that's uh, it's been a while since I played Dracothian Tell. All right, so uh, first salon is a general ancient knowledge. Uh, the, some of these are Dracothian's tale, so it gets extra spell there. Uh, spells taking Stellar Tempest and Celestial Apotheosis. Both of those are good. Uh, kill off some hordes and uh, and do some no Celestial Equilibrium gives you extra command. So that's that's the healing one. Uh, then we have Artifact God Beast Pennant, just to keep him alive. That's basically like your incandescent retresses from old. You roll if you once you get killed, you roll a dice and they'll come back. So that just helps you keep them alive, so they don't get sniped turn one and half your armies off the board. Uh, we also have the Astrolith, of course, to give extra summoning points and give you a place to summon in from, and it increases your range of your spells. Skink Priest with heal. And another Salon Star Master with Celestial Equilibrium and a Tixie Grubs. So already we have lots of heals and stuff. In. We're just four heroes in. Uh, lots of synergies here. Lots of things to remember, too. Uh, and we're not done. We got two more heroes. We have a Skink Starseer with Bind Endless Spells and incandes death Incandescent Retresses. So another way to mitigate damage. And a Skink Priest with Curse. Interesting choices of heroes here. We got we got lots of heroes, but lots of ways to keep them alive. So I kind of like that. Battle line, we've got five guard, five guard, five knights. The knights are in bounty hunters. And, oh, two units of MSU Croxagore also in bounty hunters. Nice. So we got some good bounty hunter units here. We don't have a skink star priest, which I would really like to see with the with the knights. But... I guess if you're if you're getting your minus one Ren from Starseer, maybe you don't need the Skink Star Priest. I still would have liked him though. Uh, my the two units of Croxagor are going to do great against Galician veterans. We also got a reinforced unit of Salamanders. Nice. 
Salamanders and Dracothians tell, obviously, that's that's what they're good at. And you can't... I see a purple sun down there. Hold on. We'll get to that. Salamanders are great because you can drop them down where you need to and, and take out important targets. So you do have a good balance here between Croxagore that can handle hordes and Salamanders, which will take out the priority targets. Endless Spell of Purple Sun. So you can get stacked up to good rend here, especially if you're sending in the Knights, if you're sending the Croxagore, you'll have minus three rend possibly on Croxagore, minus two on the Knights. That'll really help do some extra damage there. And our... Man, that's about it. Ooh, this is a good job, Nicholas. I'm going three and two. This is a finesse list right here. Um, you've got really kind of your one big threat, which is your salamanders, and you've got to you really got to pick your target. And then you're gonna be getting your croxagore into their hordes. So I'm guessing you're dropping down the 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 a unit of Croxagore and the Salamanders with the Skink Star Seer right behind them so that you can you can not guarantee, but you can make the charge with the Croxagore. You shoot something with the Salamanders and you make the charge with the Croxagore into their Galician veterans. At least that's kind of how I'd be doing it. You've got plenty of spells, you got lots of synergies, but man, this is a, a definitely a finesse army. You are gonna have some decent summons here. Um as the game progresses so you'll be able to you'll be able to pull in some bodies that you're missing it's not a whole lot of wounds only 99 wounds in starborn isn't a lot uh we don't really have hardly anything re we don't have any reinforcements other than the salamanders we just spent so much on the heroes and stuff but man good job nicholas i uh, three and two with uh with the Dracothians tell list and only two salamanders in it. Uh, that's 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 some pl that's playing some big brain AOS right there. <laughs> All right, good job, guys. Uh, let me know if if uh, you want me to do lists more often, and we'll we'll take a look at some of these lists. I, I enjoy always looking at lists, so uh, I'm doing this as much for me as anybody that's happened to be watching this. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see y'all later.